I'd like to talk now about something called the environment. Basically, the environment is just a list of strings that's carried by each process. Each string is of the form name equals value. We call these environment variables and usually the names are in all uppercase. From the command line using the bash shell, we place a variable into the environment with the export command, as you see here. The env command will display the entire environment. Here we're just using grep to select the value of the variable foo. From within a program, we access the environment through an external pointer called environ, which points out to an array of pointers, each one pointing to a null terminated string defining an environment variable. And the end of the array is itself marked with a null pointer. So it's straightforward to print out the program's entire environment by looping a pointer down this array. And that's precisely what this piece of code is doing here. The pointer P is being made to loop over that array until it's found to be pointing at that null pointer at the bottom. And each time round the loop, we print out the string that P is pointing to. However, it's rather more common to want to query the value of a specific environment variable than to display all of them. And that's easy. We use getEnv, passing in the name of the environment variable and receiving back a string giving its value or a null pointer if there's no such variable. Now the thing that's really important about environment variables and the environment and the thing that really sets it apart from using, for example, command line options to pass configuration information into a program is that the environment gets passed down from a process to its children and usually to their children in turn. That doesn't have to be the case. A process can choose not to pass on its environment. And we'll have a look at that in the next lesson. By the way, don't be misled by this picture into thinking you have to have two processes to create a child. Uh, that's not the case at all. We're not living in a biological world here. Here's a simple program that combines command line processing with environment access. The program takes a list of environment variable names off the command line and prints out their values. So here we are, we're looping over all of our command line arguments. We do a get env on each one to see if it's in the environment. And if it is, we print out a message to give the name and the value of the environment variable. Otherwise, we report that it's not in the environment. So let's have a look at running this. I won't take you through the process of compiling it. I think you should be getting the hang of that by now. So let's have a look for the environment variables home, uh, log name, and foo. And well, home and log name are two environment variables that are automatically maintained by the bash shell, so they're there. Foo is not in the environment. Let's place it in the environment and give it a value. And now we'll run the program again. And this time you'll see that foo is reported as being in the environment with the correct value. Notice the point I was making earlier on. Although the environment variable has been set in the shell process, it is being inherited down into the process that's running getEnv.